Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today we're going to create popping popcorn in Cinema 4D. You can get your C4D questions answered as well by becoming a CG Shortcuts member over at cgshortcuts.com or on Patreon. Now let's hop into Cinema 4D and see what we can do. So I posted this project file up on our website a while back, but loads of our members voted for a tutorial. So let's take a look at how I created it. So we'll start with a slimmed down version of the scene with just our pan, a corn kernel, and a piece of popped popcorn. And all we wanna do with this is fill our pan with corn kernels, then have them transition from unpopped to popped. So let's set that up. I'll start by bringing in a disc and scaling it down to fit inside our pan. And I'll just bring this up here. And I'm going to clone our corn kernel onto this shape. So to that, I'll add a cloner holding Alt when I click on that to apply it as a parent. Then we'll change the mode to object and the object we're going to clone this to is going to be the disc. So we'll drag that into here. And now we've got our clone kernels in the shape of the disc, but we'll increase the count to 50 to fill our pan a bit more and we can now hide that disc. And it's a bit boring having them all face the same direction like this. So let's grab our cloner and add a random effector for a bit of variation. So I don't want to randomize the position, so I'll turn that off. And instead, we'll put some random numbers into the rotation instead. Then, because we'll be making these dynamic, I don't want any of them intersecting like this. So I'll add another effector, the push apart effector, which is pushing apart way too far. So let's just set the radius down to one centimeter. Okay, so now our kernels are in position and ready to fall into the pan. But before we do that, let's figure out how we're going to transition from kernel to popped. And we're actually going to use yet another effector to do that. This time we'll use the plane effector. Now we don't want that affecting the position of this either. So I'll switch that off. And instead, the setting that's going to be key to this effect is actually down here, the modify clone parameter. And the way this works is if we now put our popped corn object into the cloner as well, we get a randomly cloned mix of both objects, which would be the case for any amount of objects inside here. But if we go back to the plane effector, watch what happens when I drag this slider along. At 4%, we're now seeing the kernels again, as this is the first item in the top of our cloned list here. And if we were to slide this further along, at a certain point, it switches all the clones to the popped corn, because that's the next object in the list. And if we were to switch the order of these, it'll also change the current object. But we want kernel two popcorn, so I'll put that back. And we'll go back to our plane effector. And we can now use this value to create our popping animation. But obviously we don't want them all to pop together at exactly the same time, but we can randomize that as well. So for now, let's set modify clone to 100%, giving us only our final popped state. And we can use fields to control which kernels get popped. So let's bring in a random field. And straight away, we're getting a mix of both objects again because the random field is being controlled by a random noise pattern. And we can change the seed value of that pattern here. And we can also scale the size of that noise pattern as well. And I think this will probably work well for us. So let's animate our noise values and see if we can get our kernels to pop one after another. And I think the easiest way to do that is probably with the remapping option here. If I adjust the strength slider here, we can clamp the values of the noise and go back to just the kernels again. And as we bring this up again, we can slowly and randomly transition to their popped state. And if we take this up to 100%, it's actually only popped on half of these, but we can take this value beyond 100 to the point where all the corn has popped. Cool, so let's go back to just before the first corn pops, about there. And if I go ahead a little bit on our timeline, I can set a keyframe here. So we get a second or so before the corn starts popping. Then if I go forward a bit more, we can pop a few more of these and keyframe that. And finally, if I go all the way to the end, I'll drag this up until they've all popped and set another keyframe. And now if we play this, we get a second of kernels, then they start popping one at a time before speeding up until they all pop by the end of the scene. So that's the transition sorted. All we need to do now is make our corn dynamic and have it interact with the pan. So to our cloner, 
let's add a rigid body tag. And we want this second one here, which uses the newer faster unified simulation system. And now that our kernels are dynamic and being affected by gravity, they'll fall down into the pan, which to interact with, we'll need to grab and make a collider. And this should give us the effect we're after, where they drop into the pan and after a brief second, start popping one after the next. Before all popping and shooting out all over the place. So from here, it's really just a matter of adjusting these settings in your dynamics tags until you're happy with your simulation. So here and in the collider, as well as your scene simulation settings. And you can grab all the values that I used from the project file. And another thing we can do if we don't want our corn to start up above the pan is under the rigid body tag, we can go to dynamics and set the initial state to where they've already fallen in. And now the scene should start from there. And one last thing that I did was add a bit of turbulence to make the corn look like it's sizzling and moving about in the pan a bit. So we'll just bring a turbulence force in and tweak the settings slightly to give us something like this. And that's pretty much how I created this effect. Although I actually originally used particles to trigger the popcorn, which you can see in the project file. But I think the slightly more modified option in this tutorial is definitely a bit quicker and easier to set up. So that's it for this one. Don't forget you can save a bunch of time and download the project files at the link below. And if you found this video useful, you can also leave a like or comment down there as well. And if you need a bit of extra help with Cinema 4D, please do get in touch or become a CG Shortcuts member, which gives you access to all of our premium C4D training, time-saving resources, and one-on-one -on -one support so you can fast track your Cinema 4D career. Just head over to cgshortcuts.com. So that's it for now. I'll catch you next time.